Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to this uh, new video. Today is not the minute of light as I usually do every day. And today I'm sharing with you um, an update about this program that I have been working on. I'm talking about the PPP and ELDL. And also a little bit about taxes. Okay, so before we start it, and I really want to ask you guys to give me one second to share this with every other people in the community. Okay, so give me just one second. Uh, today we're talking about the PPP, the ELDL, and what you guys need to know. What you guys basically uh, need to know about what is going on with the PPP and ELDL and any other program that I'm helping to I'm helping you guys to get. And more importantly is what you guys need to do at this time. Again, it's about PPP and ELDL and what you need to do about this time to make sure that you can actually still be part of the people who have received and will continue to receive this money. Okay, that's the point. The reason for this video is to let you know, give you some guidance in what you should do. Okay, and what you should do to still have your chance to actually receive all of those financing, all of those funding that the government put, you know, available for you. And that so many people will actually take the opposite way. Okay, yes, that's the reason why I have to do this video. And... I hope, I hope you get something out of it. If you don't, always feel free to actually send me a private message and it will be my pleasure to address that question. Even though I will not address in the faster manner, even though I will not, I will not address it as fast as you want to bet, I will address it. Okay? Yes. So if you check the topic of this uh, video, is what? I'm saying that on this video, I'm actually saying that the PPP, uh, this is the year you will, okay? This is the year you will regret if you make rush decision rather than informed decision. This is how I want to start this video. So this is the way the year you will take, uh, you will regret. When I say regret, it's not about what you are going to, uh, you will not lose your job or whatever it is, but you will lose on the opportunity that you have now um, compared to what you have been if you take advantage of the opportunity this is where where i'm talking about regretting it doesn't matter your you know your status your social status everybody will always need more funding more money for himself or for his business and that's the reason why i'm saying this is the year where when everybody basically nearly everybody because like i said last time a lot of people don't even know they are eligible until they are told and they are explained how they are eligible for this funding and they keep expanding the you know the scope of eligibility for this program and if you follow up you will also know that so my point here is to say that is to push the difference between uh, a harsh choice uh and an informed decision a harsh choice is when you try desperately to get something and you just close your eyes and you do something else that is what is called harsh decision okay this program has not been done in the rush if you notice you will say that you will say that uh the government not even me is taking his time Every month, month after month, if you just follow, you can put, I don't know what channel always talk about what is going on in the warehouse or even on the mainstream media. Every month, basically from January to now, every month there's a new law. There's a new, you know, there's a new, when they do that, it's not, most of the time, it's for business, it's for the economy. Sorry, I was receiving a phone call. So yes, if you guys have a question, you can actually ask question as uh, I'm going on. And it will be my pleasure to actually explain uh, if I can. Okay. So basically, I was saying that 
this program is not being done you will not succeed on this program if you are taking a harsh decision and it goes to everything even your taxes okay the people actually file the taxes in the hush in the beginning because they you know they desperately need money now you know that ten thousand dollars ten thousand two hundred are actually supposed to be tax free that means if you file your taxes initially before that law was actually in, uh, enacted or implemented into the system you know that you have lost that money even though they give you the opportunity to actually change the way i mean amend your taxes to claim those ten thousand that you pay taxes on you're still losing you have to pay attention consult consult it's only black people that don't consult because they think they are too smart and they take decision and they think okay when it's passed they say okay yo i'm i hear that so how can we do is it true how can we do even though they have heard some even though they didn't consult basically or even they received some advice and they took the opposite decision on the advice yes so everything here you need to take informed decision the opposite of informed decision is a harsh choice when you take a harsh choice it's because you are in the rush of receiving something you take the thing that you think is best for you and then you realize that there were better or two or three or four times other choice that you would have taken that if you have to if you have taken an informed decision so what is an informed decision in accounting they say an informed decision is a decision that you take as a business owner because you as a business owner that you take giving every analysis or every option that you have by a professional your professional is your financial advisor is your accountant is your cpa is your cfo that is when a cpa i mean a cfo will take informed decision the cfo will not take decision just because he just woke up and said you know what i need to take this he will always call all of the people who can give free information that will guide him into taking the decision he wants to take that is what i'm talking i'm talking about informed decision here here there's a program you need to take a choice given the fact that you consult with one or two maybe three professionals then you can see what is coming back what are the options what are the best chance you have to take the choice you want to take that is what i call informed decision a lot of people are already taking rush decision and i'm going to give you two or maybe three or four examples of the people who have taken rush decision because they are desperately in the need of what they didn't put somewhere if you are in need of something that you didn't put if i give you my thing i could be in the rush of taking that back now if i didn't give you nothing but i want something from you i know there's a way to receive it the best way to do it is to plan to follow the step until i receive what i want to get from you if it's not stealing if it's stealing you just cross your eyes you still grab it from him but if you try to get something from someone that is not yours because you didn't give it to him you need to take all the steps necessary sometimes it's not as fast as you you know you plan it will be so that is the point i want to push here for you try to make informed decision consult before you take anything any action especially on this program because it's still the best i think i may say the best is yet to come the best is yet to come on this program okay the best is yet to come on this program why because you will notice that i said on the, my previous video uh, that was not the means of taxes that on april 6 i start with the aldr now on april 6 you guys will be eligible for four times what you are normally eligible that means what your normally maximum eligibility is and what does this mean it means that initially your uh, maximum eligible amount when it comes to ELDL, okay the maximum eligible amount is basically 50 percent of your uh cost 50 percent of your sales what does this actually mean into numbers if you claim in your taxes or you have any file your taxes but you have all numbers you have your 1099 to be able to say that okay i made eighty thousand dollars a month i made ninety thousand dollars a month if you make ninety thousand dollars a month basically it means that your maximum eligible amount was forty five thousand dollars that is basically what people receive some people who receive less than that amount they were eligible to apply for you know loan increase anyway everybody was eligible to apply for loan increase and as you may watch in here you know that you will see that loan increase because dozens of people are receiving this loan increase but 
Some people will receive a wrong denial letter of loan increase. What does that mean by loan denial letter? Wrong denial letter means that they send you a decline letter. Say, oh, you are not eligible for this loan increase. Not because you are not really eligible. Because you reach the maximum eligible amount. That's giving the information that you claim and that we guess you can sustain. Uh, we gave you. That means giving the information that we have, you reach the maximum loan amount. The maximum loan amount is 50% of your cost. That means if your cost were $90,000 when you apply in 2020, they give you uh, $45,000. Now, when you apply again for, for increase, they will say, no, uh, we're sorry, but you reach the maximum amount of your eligibility. If you were eligible for $45,000, I just said, because your cost was 90000 and you receive let's say $35,000 the first time when you are doing the loan increase now you will be eligible for another $10,000 that is before the new update in terms of eligibility um, being pulled out or being adopted so before that if you receive $35,000 initially and your income was $90,000 and you apply for a loan increase, the maximum eligible amount you can also get is actually 10,000. 10,000 to max everything to 45,000. And that's the reason why some people who didn't receive up to 50% of their course are receiving the difference. Okay, up to now, as I'm talking today, April 3rd, 2021. The people who didn't receive, who received the maximum, they are telling them, oh, we sorry, but we reached a maximum. Now, when I say the best is yet to come, is that the new eligibility now is the old eligibility times four. Very right. The new eligibility is what you were normally supposed to be eligible in terms of maximum amount times four. So I see people who yes, just, oh, I, I mean, I, I made the eligibility, I made the request for consideration. I never follow up because, you know, that they, are, they keep adding money to this program. And I will invite you guys to watch the news about that. They keep increasing money into this program. It's not for you to get discouraged and leave, okay? Because they see a lot of people actually are interested in on. So now the new eligibility is that you will be eligible, eligible for four times more than what you were actually eligible. That means the forty thousand, the forty-five thousand dollars maximum limit that you have before will be times four that means you are now eligible for get it right one thousand uh one hundred eighty thousand dollars because if you make 45 times four i believe it's uh, uh, one hundred eighty thousand one hundred and eighty thousand dollars this is your eligibility imagine that you gave up long time ago or maybe you were only eligible for ten thousand and you say ten thousand you know it's nothing now your new eligibility, new maximum is actually twenty thousand dollars because ten thousand times four is actually twenty. That means even though you were only eligible for five thousand because you didn't work that much, you, your income was only ten thousand. I see people that has growth for only ten thousand. Now your new maximum is not five thousand no more. It's twenty thousand dollars. Actually, twice your gross income. Okay, this is what I want people to know. That is what is referred to what you saw online. The new limit is five hundred thousand dollars, and that is a loan without you having to prove anything. It used to be one fifty, one hundred fifty k that you have to have as a limit. That one hundred fifty k has been, uh, you know, increased to actually five hundred. That means a business owner can actually get up to five hundred thousand dollars. Sorry, I was on. I'm I'm, I'm getting disturbed. Okay, sorry. Okay, so the new eligibility here is that you will receive up to $500,000. Imagine that your gross income is $150,000. Now, your new eligibility, your old eligibility was supposed to be five, I mean, 75,000 times 75,000 by four. That is now how much? $300,000, man. Imagine that. So what action are you taking towards this? I want, that's the question I want to ask you guys. And it's only when this program is going to be over and then you will learn, you will know about the people who actually, you know, 
who were following up, who asked questions, called professionals, say, okay, is it true? I heard that. Even though I, I didn't know that you said that in your PhD video, but I heard that. Is it true? And then you say yes. And you see other people who were receiving those money. That will be the time that you will that we now read again the you know the description of this video that is saying you will regret that will be a time you will be regret oh why didn't i do that why didn't i do that so this is what is about this program right here so of course there are so many things in there so basically what can you do with the ELDN? somebody just asked me today before i started the video can we still do the ELDN? of course yes yes yeah the ELDN is still there if you haven't applied for ELDN and you made any self-employment activity it doesn't matter if your business is actually incorporated or no you are basically eligible okay just apply because guess what your eligibility amount is times three times more that's why i've been contacting some of my people who apply and even receive the increase i'm trying to contact them so you know what you receive an increase last time but there is even more to come and by the way the sba said that by April 6, April 6, they will actually, guess what, emailing people to inform them about the new eligibility that they have. So if you are not following up, you will be surprised. It's just like, uh, you know, this 10,000 grand. The 10,000 grand, I went on live, private live many times to let you know that this is what is coming. I mean, every day, basically, I have people on the phone. When I talk to them, I say, okay. I mean, do you know you're actually eligible for 10,000 grand? What's 10,000 grand? Can you check your email? Look at this email, targetedadvance at sba.gov. Check to see if you ever receive an email from this email address. When he checked, he see that he was sent an invitation to claim the $10,000 grant. I mean, he's not following up. He's not following up. A lot of people, anytime we talk, did you receive? No, I don't think so. Yes. Everybody should be receiving it. If you haven't received it, it will, it, will, it will just be a matter of time before you receive that invitation to claim the $10,000 grant. Why do you have to have the $10,000 grant? Because you just apply for the EIDL. That means even though you will be, you know, uh, declined, maybe because your credit is so bad, you know, you have 200 credit score and they get you, you know, denied, it doesn't prevent you from be eligible for the ten thousand dollars grant some people will actually even apply for the ppp eidl not because they want the loan some people say i don't want the loan you know if you don't have you know no perspective you don't have no plan of expanding your business or really sustain your business or making your business more successful or take your business to the next level you may not take the grant because it, i mean you may not take the loan because it it, it, it doesn't really help you to uh, take the loan if you don't invest it even though a 3% loan is better than a 21% credit card interest. I, I guess, or, or, or at least on that, we agree. A 3%, a 3.75% SBA loan is better than a 7% of your car loan. And I have one video of one hour that around that video, I think it was 2020, last year, where I was explaining 10 different, 10 reasons why you have to apply for the EIDL. Whether you have a plan to expand or to really sustain your business or no, because it's a better finance. Sorry, sorry, I got interrupted by a different phone call. Let me tell this person that I'm on live. So basically, you have better chance to, I mean, I will always choose a 3.5% interest loan compared to a 7% car loan. A, I don't know, 6% mortgage or 21% credit card. I, I will always go to the one that is 30%, especially if I don't have, they don't have to run my credit. If they don't have, to, I don't have to have no deposit at all, I will always opt for that. <laughs> but, you know, and now some people will get away, stay away from me because, oh, what is the, what is the implication? And I received this question every, even yesterday. Is there any, you know, cons what's the consequences on this? What's the consequences on that? The first consequence is that you are not eligible to pay back. No, you pay back why? Because you took the money and just you don't use the money for for uh, for for, uh, for pleasure. The consequence is that you will have a new line of credit that you will pay. You will not you will only you will not even know what you you have done with the money. That's the only con. Now at the federal level, 
The consequences is that you are taking that money by information that you have provided in your application and that you cannot sustain. That is where it will be considered as a fraud. And that is where the consulting comes into play compared to people who are doing application, just throwing any numbers in the application and receive, you know, giant <laughs> eligible amount, right? That's the consequence because guess what? You may have not been watching. I will invite you to go to the, your email, check, um, you know, disaster customer service, whatever it is, and check all the emails you received since you were uh, approved with the ERDL, if you received the first one of ERDL. Why? Because they are now inviting you to provide some more documentation to prove that you are, your business actually exists, that you have, you know, uh, you know uh, a, a million that were actually granting you, you X or Y, X or Y person as a, you know, uh, administrator, the manager of the business to actually go and apply for the business. They actually want you to provide more information about your business. That means if you create something without even having a business, that's, that's a big issue there, okay? That's the reason why doing this has to be um, a wise and professional manner. It has to be done in the most professional manner. That's why you have to consult. Because once it becomes like that, you are flat at say, somebody who is doing fault, even though it was not a fault, even though you are just trying to, you know, to, you know, because they say, how much income do you make a year? You put in information that you think that you're making, but maybe those information are not in your taxes. Your taxes as the, the, or the higher authority document that you can use to prove what you are making. That's the reason why some people will not disclose their taxes, okay? Because that is where the IRS knows what you say that you have, what you say that you're making. It's not what you're actually making because most people are making money, either they put they claim less or they claim more. But what you have to present whenever they're asking you, especially for a federal government or even for a bank, they're asking you to provide any information, financial information especially. You have to remember what is in your taxes. It's not what you, it's in your bank account. doesn't matter what is your bank account. It's what is in your business taxes, your income taxes, your individual taxes. That is why you need to pay attention. Okay? So this was too much about the ERDL. Um, just to let you know that the 10,000 grants still available. You guys still receiving it. You have to rush in applying for those 10,000 grants because those are free money. You don't even need to apply for it. Now I'm going to move on to the PPP. This is where a lot of people, a lot of frustration is, is rising. Okay? What happened with the PPP? The PPP, if you Google, if you Google in the PPP now, okay? If you Google on the PPP, you will notice that you will notice that uh, a lot of people, a lot of people are actually um, getting frustrated because of the PPP. Why? It's a simple reason. It's a, there's a simple reason is that at the beginning, at the beginning, give me one second, guys. Uh, you need to take care of some hours here. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm doing a meeting now, wait. Okay, so basically, uh, what I was saying is that this, this PPP started on January, the PPP started on January, on March 2020. That is, it's been more, it's been one year, it was one year in March. That means a lot of people were actually unaware of it. Now, because we are talking, I'm talking so many, you know, YouTube channels came up there to start talking about PPP. Now, millions of more new people are naturally watching the PPP and trying to get their fair share. And it's just normal because they are actually putting more money into the program. Okay, the program was supposed to expire on March, right? Now, they postponed it to when? They postponed it to, they postponed it to, uh, to uh, two more months, basically. So you have the opportunity to take the, what I call informed decision into your PPP. And over here, of course, a lot of system, a lot of render, lenders, are getting crowded just the way my company is getting crowded i'm gonna i mean i mean i'm receiving four times the uh, the amount of requests that i was saying last year why because if i have told one person the person i told or explained i had to get have told four person that is four times the size of what we are actually receiving to help people even though we hire more people what we are doing 
of course there will still be a slowness into the process of this thing but i decided i went to this program to help i will still say that i went to this program to help i will not give up until with you especially if you're watching me and i start the program with you until i tell you that there's no way no more option for you i will keep working on it of course now it will take longer than it was taking at the beginning but i will still be there to work with you guys to make sure that i take any action possible that i will be doing for you now you i will just want you to bear with me because now you have first time size of the people that I was helping with. That may, might be the reason why there will be a slowness in, in, the, in the response of you guys, uh, you know, um, assistance basically. But what I want you guys to know is that my team and I, we are dedicated to help you until the last day of the PPP. That's the reason why when we notice that there's one of the uh, lender that we are working with, they start to be crowded as well. We now working with different lenders at the same time with the same application. That means I don't want you to be surprised if you are receiving feedback or follow up about different lender than the one I initially started with you. Yes, because I'm just putting more chances towards you. I'm not asking you for nothing when I'm doing that. Just because I'm just trying that you get what is available because I know it's available. A lot of people will not receive it because they will take rush choices they will pick rush choices and they have been doing that i'm gonna share with you two examples or maybe three okay depending on how long if i'm if i'm tired of talking or no so this is what is happening with the ppp and i will invite you to ask on the google why is the ppp so slow now just as people are typing why is my tax return still on processing for so long go and type it the whole system is actually overwhelmed it's not your fault it's not their fault. It's be, well, maybe their fault because they didn't hire more people. But I received re recent um, uh, return saying that the IRS, of course, the IRS is two times, four times over one day now. That's the reason why some people are not receiving the taxes faster. Why? One of the simple reasons is that the IRS is receiving more and more and more and more and more and more and more requests f about this program that is falling on their head. You know, you, you have the you have the, um, the those stimulus. And more stimulus still coming. If you watch the news, the president is actually thinking about a fourth stimulus check. Okay, all of those will be falling into falling on the IRS head. But the IRS cannot just hire any anyone to just continue this program because those are top secret information: your date of birth, social security, uh, your family information. So they just cannot. That's what I receive, you know, as a tax professional from the IRS. Uh, from the IRS directly. So they cannot just do that, just hire new people, just the way some government entity they are doing for the unemployment. You know that for the unemployment, some people were concerned with people actually sitting for, from their home to call to do the interview. They're not even from the IRS. Same thing for the SBA. But for the IRS, they just cannot just, you know, hire anyhow, having you sitting in your house and taking you know, everybody information. Yeah, they have to do really have a, a big due diligence in doing those. That's the reason why they are just where they are. Same thing for this program. This program are meant to help you, but it will be difficult because now everybody is aware of it. Okay, so you guys need to be patient. The only thing is to be patient because you didn't plan that money. That's the first thing. Put it in your head. Put in your head, did that plan, is it my money I give it to someone, I'm just having, I'm just trying to have him give him back to me. This. So when you are desperate, ask yourself, is this the money I gave you, I'm just trying to get back. If it's a choice, not take any action without thinking because it's your money. But if you are trying to get what they're putting available for you guys, think twice because you took, you take an, a rush, a rush choice. Where? I'm coming. So basically, one of the examples of somebody who took a harsh decision is that he started the program, the program is going smoothly. Now the, the person is on the horse. I don't know what he planned to do with the money, even though he didn't give the money to someone. And he go there, someone tell him, okay, go to your application, you know, put this one, put this information that put this information application, put this, put this, put that. Now the person put all the information application. 
Boom, he got eligible. PPP, $20,000. They even tell his friend, oh, Russell, they are, they are slow. Like, I'm in the rush. I need to do the money. I got $20,000. The other people got stressed out. Call me, oh, Russell, this person received $20,000. Why am I still worried for? Now, two days later, the same people call. Hey, please, I apply here. I was eligible for $10,000. Now they ask me to provide. And now they send me the card. I don't know why. When I request, when I review the document he sent to the wherever he sent to, I noticed that the information that he have on his document are inconsistent with what he actually put in his application. That was actually the first reason I have an article on LinkedIn on that in 2000, I think it was August 2000, last year, when I was planning why is it that so many business owners are actually not receiving the PPP? Because every business owner jump into the application Put any number, how much do you put a year, how much do you put a month, how many employees do you have? You don't even know what what, what employee means. Employee means doesn't mean that somebody is coming to your office helping you every month, you give him 300 for it. Employees mean that you have a payroll, that's what employees mean. How many employees do you have? You hear that when you put more employees, you get some more money. You put two or five employees. That is what is what the first, the people have lost the money the first time. And I wrote an article on that on LinkedIn. If you go to my LinkedIn page, you will see that maybe it was August 2020. So now same people is happening. To have somebody helping him, now he's in the rush. He hear from friend that, oh, go there, go to this link, put these numbers, you will receive this. Now, when he's locked, he called us again because we actually have his application process. And he said, yeah, I received a decline letter. When I look at the decline letter, and I haven't seen somebody receive a decline letter, by the way. Until you send those inconsistent, then they actually cancel, they cancel your loan. That's what it means, decline letter. So when I look at information, first of all, you don't know how to work, how to read your tax information. If you don't know how to read your tax document, how do you like how the hell you would think you will be able to do those things? It's just impossible. You will think you will put numbers that is are in your head, not the numbers that are in your financial do document. And of course, that's a double work for us. If you want to now restart the process, you go there, you you screw yourself, and you come back to have her to help you. Yes, we will help you because we started the process with you. Not because you have to save you for where you guys go on. Okay? But if you have not done nothing yet, you just go there and do it. That will be very difficult. So the, the, the second case is that someone, a, 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 a man, still a business owner, you go there and you put, you apply by yourself. And you put so many employees in there because they ask you how many employees you have. You put, I think she put, uh, I think it was uh, eight employees on the application. Now the person will call to say, "Hey, do you know? Do you know how to create? Do you know how to create payroll? Because once you fill your application, <laughs> one of the document that logically uh, the system will ask you once they." Grant to the eligibility. The eligibility is based on the numbers you put in the system. When I train my people, that's what I tell them. The eligibility is one based on the numbers you put in your application. While the, that eligibility is given, now in order to review and approve that money, it has to match with the document you will now submit it. Okay? So now you make your application, you put there that you have 10 employees. I mean, eight employees because you heard somewhere that when you put more employees, you receive more money, right? Yeah, of course, that's a good thing because the person is receiving the money. Now, they're asking you for to provide a payroll report. Now, you're calling the person who initially is actually helping you and know everything along the way to ask, to ask if the person can create a payroll report for you. What does this mean? It means you don't know what you're doing, okay? That's the reason why I'm saying that be patient because the program is actually postponed up to may may 31st i mean you have two more months two more months and now we are actually working with two or three different lenders for each application to actually maximize the chances that you have and we i will not ask you to pay me twice three times because i'm actually working three times on your application following up three different platforms i'm not asking you for that what we are asking you is to be patient and to actually respond to the email if my staff email you to ask for any information. Sometimes, even though you think that you will send the information already, it doesn't cost you nothing. Just attach the same document. Okay? How many times you guys who are on the on the PPP? 
you send the 45060 and then next time you receive an email requesting for the same document just send it and forget about it basically okay see one of our team is actually sending you an email to request for even your driver license even though you know you provide the license the same day that you you got us in on the phone just attach your driver license send it, send it out it will help us to actually be in there to process those applications for you go online i want you guys i'm serious ask why is the ppp now taking longer you will see you will have some information about what what's the reason okay so yes so i have two people one person actually went there and to all information some people will receive the money i mean you know the is 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 uh, is uh, uh, managed by the bank that means your lender can actually forget about those documents that means you just grant you the money but they will still ask for that when it comes to uh, uh, what is called forgiveness because remember the PPP is a, forgive, is a forgivable loan when it comes to forgiveness they will ask you to provide all of those information if they fail or they forget because they have so many documents they can forget to ask to ask for those documents now if they fail to ask for that, of course, on the forgiveness, they will ask for those documents, especially when you want to initiate the forgiveness. Now, at that time, they will realize that you actually took the document, the money that you were not actually supposed to. It becomes a fraud, even though you receive the money already. That is where I want to be. I want you guys to be very serious about this program because it's for everyone, I said. But you have to be informed. In what you are doing you want to do yourself that's fine call three cpas google ppa and ppp expert call them or call the ppp themselves call the sba get all the information gather all the information learn how to read your financial information then go there and put the way that when you know that you can actually calculate your own eligibility i, I don't share i mean it's not a secret how much you should be eligible it's just a matter of how to prove those numbers so go there, do informed decision. You don't have to rush because your colleague, your friend have done this. Just go there and do that. When they when he receive a letter from the federal government because he is or his post on the news media because he's receiving you know fraudulent PPP, you're not going to be there with him. You know by the way, same thing. If it's you, you won't be there with him. So they won't call. It's okay. You know where did you get the information from maybe the person put all the information he needs okay maybe the person knows how to read his taxes maybe you know how to read his in his what is called a uh, profit and love statement he balance sheet he balance, he financial information you don't so don't just go there because people are doing things and do the exact same thing you have to take informed decision because this is another consequence somebody was asking me what's the consequences if you're taking this money and you cannot back up with what you have as a supporting document that is why you're going to be in big trouble with the federal government and you know federal government means that though it doesn't matter where you are they can trap you okay so i don't see question here i don't know if you guys have question and and of course we will still be a way i mean available to help you guys because this is why we said we will help now when it comes to taxes you got to pay attention when you do your taxes yeah call your tax professional call your cpa to say about my business do you think i should find my business taxes now or i should wait a little bit do you think i should find my income taxes now or i should wait a little bit what are the options available that can make me save money i'm making 100k what are the dispositions that are available within the case app those programs that can make me save money or postpone taxes basically because always postpone taxes if you can because they will always, if there's a new outcome, the new tax law, the new tax law most of the time should be in favor of um, taxpayer, okay? Unless you are making millions of dollars, of course, if you are making millions of dollars, you have already planned in advance. I don't know no company which is making more dollars that don't plan when they are going to cut the tax bill. Impossible. They are investing on that, okay? Now, if you're making 100K or more, you need to consult with your tax professional, your CP, to say, okay, I know I failed to plan during the year. Now, what are the things that are available me, for me now to at least postpone? Because once you postpone, there could be a, a new provision that could even make the postponed taxes being, you know, tax free now. The postponed portion of your income being tax free, basically. 
okay so yes i don't know i don't see the question here but if you are new here my name is russell russell for us i'm a tax and accounting professional now i specialize on helping business owners to receive those pp gram let me see what you have available you have the ppp first you have the eidl okay and you have the ten thousand dollars grant those are the three programs you have now available and now just to recap the ERGL now is giving you four times eligibility. I say four times starting on April 15. So if you are applied already and you receive your maximum already, they will contact you. That's what I'm saying. That's what they are saying. They will contact you by email, just the way they're contacting you by WhatsApp. I mean, for the 10,000 grand to say, hey, now you should be eligible for 10,000. I mean, for they tell the eligible amount of course it's always proposed to you you can say you were eligible for four thousand now you're eligible for uh, four thousand for for, for one hundred sixty thousand dollars you can say okay i only want one hundred one thousand dollars you pick what you want okay so if you apply for the first time april 16 that is what your new eligibility will be or if you are in the process of uh increasing or you are in the process of the reconsideration another thing I will never get tired of saying this. It doesn't matter if you were approved for PPP or no. You are eligible for reconsideration. That means they reconsider your application and they get you approved this time. That means even though you are in the reconsideration process, your eligible amount is not going to be the 50% of the income that you claim in your taxes. And that is also be what it should also be what you put in your application. You'll be eligible for four times that eligibility okay so uh, i don't know what i want to add to this uh, this was everything i want to share with you guys and i hope you guys can you know actually enjoyed it i hope you got something new out of it if there's still something that you need i should explain more post on the video or send me a private message on whatsapp or email or whatever uh, or you know facebook messenger whatever you want that is uh, that it will help to address the concern you still have so yes until then if you like it and you know someone who is a self-employer just share the video with him and connect to our youtube channel where we are sharing this new program called the minute of taxes hey by the way i was telling you guys the last time i almost forgot that not being in the rush because the ten thousand um, dollars uh, unemployment uh, tax, tax free it was given to people. Some people uh, failed to take it because they found the taxes too soon. Now they got paid on the on that on that ten thousand grand ten thousand dollars unemployment. Now they are saying that 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 portion will be free ten thousand two hundred will be tax free. That means what people are doing. I'm starting be doing that with some of my customers. Apply for you know apply for what is called amendment to to actually claim the money that you pay in excess based on the fact that you pay taxes on that unemployment and that you know you are not supposed to pay taxes on okay so yes what you are i'm doing now is to apply for re i mean amendment let's say you pay and uh, you pay taxes on the whole twenty thousand dollar on unemployment now you should have paid taxes only on half of it that means no matter what in the refund that you receive that refund that is that, that refund should have been actually more so that refund should have been more than that why because you pay taxes on 10 20 000. you were supposed to pay taxes on 10 000. that means basically there you double you pay taxes twice on that on that income even though you receive the refund okay it means if you didn't pay if you if you have to remove the taxes you should have paid on it your refund should have been higher than that that's what it means okay so now the government said that they will actually start giving you that money like automatically okay so let's watch so you may maybe put a hold on doing you know a request for reconsideration or an amendment sorry you may you, you may put a hold on doing an amendment but if you want because the amendment i will actually advise you guys to do the amendment why because your tax professional your cpa will be the best person to calculate <laughs> how much you should actually be eligible for yeah that's why we think that's what that's how we go for 
I will suggest that you consult you still do the amendment by the way because in the highway IRS, IRS office the person trying to see how much is um, how much you'll be eligible for the person you don't pay the person to do that he's doing this because you know, they have to correct, correct their mistake but you will just take what they're giving you you will not know if you see right or no maybe you will still need to take that and go and consult with your CP to say, okay, this is the check I receive for unemployment because I pay in, I pay tax on unemployment, then they remove taxes on it. Should that was it right? So I still should suggest that that's actually what I'm doing. Even through this morning, I'm going to submit an an, an amendment return to claim those twenty ten thousand dollars income that my customer pay money on. So yes, but I have to let you know that they are actually saying they're going to actually issue automatic refunds the way they're issuing the, the stimulus to the people who pay taxes five taxes already and pay taxes on the unemployment on the 10,000 20, 10, uh, portion of the unemployment they are saying they're going to actually issue the refund to them you have the choice can just what to receive the refund or you can contact with us tax professional to say okay if they have to eliminate this portion what should be a new refund that i will receive your tax firm will actually tell you okay so until then see you tomorrow or tonight for the next minute of the minute of taxes that was Russell Follas, your task and specialist. See you tomorrow. Ciao. <laughs>